The question is, should we treat all people with progressive MS? Well, maybe at one stage, but at what stage? Uh, it was shown by, uh, or it was, we, we had uh, in the last year two uh, major guidelines, one from the AAN Actrims guideline and the other one the AAN guideline. And when it comes to progressive MS, we see that the recommendations are limited. However, it's uh, from all the studies and also based on experience, uh, what progressive MS patients are more likely to respond to these, let's say, new therapies. And these are people who are still ambulatory, people who are maybe much, well, not much, but who are younger, and people who have some clinical NMRI activity. So they have a progression, but they continue to have enhancing lesions, new lesions in their brain MRIs or spinal cord MRIs, and they have uh, some clinical overlapping activity, let's say, rather than relapses. So these people are more likely to respond to these B-cell depleting therapies, maybe to siponimod and then some other therapies. We partially mentioned about the imaging studies. We know a number of uh, MRI predictors, and the major one seems to be atrophy, mainly gray matter atrophy, and now mostly what we is studied and uh, published is on spinal cord atrophy. So in people with progressive MS, we know that spinal cord atrophy starts much earlier probably thalamic atrophy and that's very uh, logical because as we know that thalami are the relay station for many tracks so it's, it's natural that uh, an early uh, atrophy may be observed and this has been shown in people with RIS and even in pediatric uh, populations. So uh, yes, MRI is kind of predicting uh, the number of the T2 lesions, some other locations, that, that's not very, that's more controversial maybe, but atrophy seems to be more or less uh, shown in most studies. But as I was mentioning, maybe the PET studies might give us a clue, uh, some more evidence in the future. And now we have about uh, biomarkers that we study in the serum and the CSF and that serum is certainly much easier and we can follow up patients and that has been a lot of publications recently on uh, neurofilament light uh, protein and of now newly there are also on GIFAB and some others are likely to come. So in people who with progressive MS who I was just mentioning having some MRI activity if their NFL levels are high, probably they might be better responders to therapy or maybe give up as well. So I think this is also an open area that we are at the moment exploring. And maybe in a year or two or three, we will have much more answers through these predictors.